Hello everybody, my name is Crystal and this is my sewing channel, my social thread. To all my new viewers, a warm welcome and an invitation to click the like and subscribe button if you are liking my content. And of course, to all my returning viewers, thank you so much for your ongoing support of my channel. So here we are again, we find ourselves um, end, uh, end of the month, roundup of the month, and this is my roundups for February 2023, and my makes are behind me. Um, and you will notice, for those of you that do follow me, I don't have that many items. I normally churn out quite a lot of items, mostly items that, um, garments that I have made before, and I just enjoy making and wearing them, and so I kind of have a quick turnaround for those items. Um, also children's clothes, um, smaller scale, um, less fabric, you know, so that's again can get churned out quite quite quickly um, for me. Um, but this month I had a big um, meaty project. I sewed up a coat and so my other garments. I've only made two outfits for my daughter Anya and a dress for myself and then the coat that I was talking about. So shall we begin with the first one? So these, um, the first two patterns you have seen before and I have discussed a lot about I have discussed about I have discussed them a lot before in the past <laughs> I try not to um, edit my videos as much as I can just because editing can take quite some time and also it takes out the I suppose the spontaneity of it all so hopefully you don't mind <laughs> so the first pattern is again the my trusted um go-to pattern for children's for girls dresses um is the ellie and mac um kids pattern be curious dress and as i say i've i've, I've made this many times before you basically have a bodice um a gathered skirt a ruffle long sleeves um sh you can also obviously shorten the sleeves and you've got a sleeve ruffle as well it's got buttons at the back a button placket at the back and the bodice is fully lined it goes from 12 months to big kid 12 which is great instructions are very simple ellie mac do have if you do visit their website they have so many patterns children men and women um and there's just lots of different styles as well instructions are very easy to um to follow and all of their patterns are pdf they don't do paper patterns so the first address that i made for my daughter anya who is nine i actually made her the big kid size 12 just in terms of the length of the sleeves and just the overall fit around the waist and then for my next one i decided to just taper it in so the bodice was fine apart from the waist it was quite wide at the waist so i just decided to taper it in a bit um, and then now i've got the perfect um sort of bodice um, block for her for now because children grow so quickly Anya's growing quickly as children do because Anya is a child and um, so my first one here is this one this is made in a linen mix or linen chambre I think it's a linen mix um, from Lady McElroy and it's basically a black base with lots of florals on it I think it was a two meter piece I bought this um, in the um, Christmas sale two years ago now as a remnant piece and I liked it for myself now from far away I fell in love with the fabric obviously I only saw it on on photos online but from far away it's just a lovely sorry this hanger is too small obviously it looks like a beautiful floral. I mean, it is a beautiful floral, but up close for me personally, I just didn't like it on myself. So it's been sat in my stash for two weeks. Um, but luckily, not two weeks, two years, but luckily my daughter liked it and I made this dress for, um, out of it for her. So this is the bodice. As I say, it's fully lined all on the inside, long sleeves, elasticated cuffs. Um, I do um, lengthen the bodice because the shortened bodice is more of a vintage style with a shorter skirt, which is not her style at all. So I lengthen the bodice, still have the gathered skirt and I also have the ruffle at the bottom. At the back, it's just a button placket closure. You've got some heart buttons here that are in my stash. Uh, and that's it really, a very easy make. I would say I could get it done in an evening. So that is the um, the lining, the bodice is fully enclosed. Um, I could do probably a dress in, the e in an evening, um, which is really nice. And um, if I'm on the lookout for at remnant sort of sales, if I see a two meter piece, I know that either it could be a blouse for myself or a dress for Anya. So <laughs> that's always good when you're shopping to have in mind sort of um, projects that you could use remnant pieces up in with. So that's the first dress. I'll pop up a photo of Anya wearing it. This hanger's a bit small, so it might fall off. And then the second one is exactly the same, except that I just tapered the, in, the waist in a bit. Exactly the same, um, but with the waist, I just tapered it down at the... Um, 
I tapered it down at the side seams and for this one I only I didn't have I probably had a meter and a half of this fabric because I originally was going to make her a um um like a skirt and it just obviously never got never got sewn up never got sewn up and this is just a needle cord a floral needle cord from pound fabrics pound fabrics by the way is a really great shop to purchase from because um they've got good quality fabrics great prices obviously they're not a pound as the um <laughs> as their shop name um describes but they are very very good and i have found that most of their fabrics well some of their fabrics are on sale in other shops for higher prices so if i find something in a shop that i quite fancy i will always check well i try to always check pan fabrics first to see if they've got the same fabric for cheaper and i will buy from them also they have a point system almost like collecting points and now i think i've saved up enough points to get seven pounds off my next order which is really great delivery is really good as well so that's that and i didn't have enough fabric as i say so i had to line the bodice with some leftover um lawn which i lined actually my heather blazer coat in um so that's that one. Oh, again because i didn't have enough fabric not only did i not line it with the same fabric i didn't put the ruffle at the bottom either because i just didn't have enough fabric but that's a lovely colorway there i also have this fabric in a navy blue which i was going to make another dress for her but i just didn't have the time to do that and um I didn't get around to doing that. So there's a photo of Anya wearing this dress. And then my third make of the month, I'm going really slowly here because that dress is going to fall off, is this dress here. This is the Sew Over It Georgie dress. It's made up in a, I think it's an ITY, um, interlock, is it called interlock jersey? Or it kind of has like, a very lightweight scuba feel so it's obviously a knit stretch fabric but it's got like a i mean i don't know what it is but yeah so this is from minerva crafts again in my stash for ages and ages and ages and i normally with the georgie i know as i mean i normally buy fabric fabrics in three meter cuts and for the georgie because it's a three-quarter circle skirt you do use up pretty much all of the fabric and so mostly for the lining i use just um contrasting well not contrasting kind of matching um cotton jersey for the lining or viscose jersey and i just had some white jersey in my stash oh i can i've just seen it now not only so i had white cotton jersey for this but for the back here i don't know if you can see that pattern it's actually um a eucalyptus pattern that i've just t turned around turned away turned the other way for my back by this lining because i didn't have enough fabric um but this is a lovely dress it is basically a long sleeve dress i don't know why i just went to that side sorry <laughs> it's a long sleeve dress it's a faux wrap uh v-neck and it's got um like um gathering here just for the design feature and it has a three-quarter length skirt a three-quarter circle skirt a three-quarter circle skirt or you also have the option to have a gathered skirt if you want to and you can also add belt loops on the side if you wanted to add a belt um it's fully lined um all done on my overlocker apart from the hems i think that's right apart from the hems um, and let me get out the Georgie pattern for you. The Georgie pattern is by Sew Over It, as I've said. It is this one right here. So you can see wrap, long sleeves. This is the three three quarter circle skirt. This is the gathered skirt with the belt loops. Again, the sleeves you can shorten as you please and the skirts you can shorten or lengthen as you please. Uh, this goes from a size six to a size 30. Um, size six is a bust of 31 waist of 24 all the way up to a bust of 57 and a waist of 50 i do my normal um so over at size 12 um and it what fits perfectly also because of the um the nature of of knit fabrics it um anyway it's a good fit on me and yeah 
with regards to um finished garment measurements yes it's the same so yes with garment with um knit um patterns for those of you that don't know um normally uh, between the body measurements and the finished garment measurements and um, there's negative ease which means for example a size 12 here the bust is 37 the waist is 30 and the finished garments the bust is 34 and the waist is 30 and a quarter inches so there's negative ease and the reason for that is it allows the stretch of the fabric to then um conform to your body shape which is really nice for knit fabrics and um, whilst for woven fabrics for example you'd normally have positive ease so if it, the bust was 37 and the waist was was 30 you would probably have two to three inches of ease at the bust bringing it up to a 40 um inch bust um in finished garment measurements and the waist you probably have two to three inches in e of ease in that as well and that's just normally ease of movement but also if you wanted a slight looser fit then you have more ease as well so that was that I have made this loads of times before, so it's really a great quick pattern. I could make this probably in an evening, actually, if I was just, you know, I was on the ball. So the only thing I need to mention with um, with this particular pattern is the instructions are great. Um, but um, the one thing that I have never actually done right. So um, when you're attaching the um front bodice with the lining you either have to um, add elastic or stay what do they call it mm. is it called stay elastic stay ah yeah it's called ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. clear elastic uh clear elastic which is i guess swimwear elastic or underwear elastic so clear elastic to stay the um to stay the neckline and also to add um extra stretch and recovery of stretch when you're um with the with the v-wrap um especially in my case i mean i think i would never i've never done it without the elastic to be fair um but especially in my case where i use it for breast use the dresses for breastfeeding i'm forever pulling the um, v-neck up and down so the elastic is very important so what i did want to say was with the pattern it gives you measurements for how much um elastic to cut and then you then um start um you start pinning it from the middle all the way down and then from the middle all the way down the other side and obviously if your elastic is too short that means your fabric has stretched out and you need to ease it all in within the the measurement of that elastic that it gives you so for some reason i tried that once or twice and my elastic was never enough so i'm assuming my fabric has stretched out or it's just wrong measurements so what i've just decided to do is instead of cutting the elastic to the measurements given i literally just have the elastic on the roll and i don't start from the middle i just start from one end and i pin it all the way round without stretching it the fabric or the elastic i pin it all the way round and i literally just cut it where i need to cut it and um, so that's what i do i don't follow the measurement charts at all the other thing as well is i was out of um clear elastic and I just used normal white elastic, um, like a quarter inch or half an inch, half an inch wide elastic. And that worked perfectly fine. Um, there was no issues at all. So they were just the that was just the only alteration that I did kind of in terms of not using clear elastic, um, but using. Um, sorry, I keep looking over here. I know my camera's over here. Um, so using normal elastic instead of clear elastic. So it does work. I guess any elastic would do. I mean, what other elastics are there? But yeah, um, I guess, yeah, you, what you just need to bear in mind is not having anything bigger than, bigger than one centimeter, bigger than one centimeter, because the elastic needs to be within the seam allowance. So then when you join, um, do we top stitch it? Yeah. So then when you join uh, the front piece to the back piece, where is it? Sorry. So when you join the front piece to the back piece, you're not um sewing through the elastic you're sewing just outside the elastic which is really good everything else is really easy to do instructions are perfectly doable you could add pockets if you wanted to although it doesn't say it here 
um, you could add because he has side seams you can easily add pocket pieces my go-to pocket piece is the Tilly and the Buttons Lyra pocket I use that for everything although to be fair I haven't actually got a dress that I've made a jersey dress that I've put pockets in and the reason for that is I was once um, making the Nina Lee sweater dress which is called it's not called the Mayfair I'm not sure what it's called now but they have a sweater dress and um it has a pocket piece in and i was making my sweater dress out of sweatshirting and i made the pockets in the sweatshirting fabric as well and when i wore it you've just got this big like kangaroo pouch hole in the side of of your dresses and it just looked really really awful and that's really put me off um putting um, pockets in jersey outfits or jersey garments although now a friend of mine has recently just made um some dresses in jersey and because it's a viscose jersey or a cotton jersey you don't get that big gape and um, the pockets are fine especially if they're top stitched um onto the seam allowance um what is it called under stitch onto the seam allowance uh, then it's perfectly fine so yeah you could easily add pockets to this pattern so that's my sew over it Georgie dress. I'll pop up a photo of myself wearing it. And then last but not least, obviously, is my um, sew over it Vivian coat. So should I show you the pattern first? Sew over it Vivian coat. I won't go into full detail about details about this. Um, because I have made two separate vlogs on this. It's called the Sew Over It Vivian Coat Part 1 and Sew Over It Vivian Coat Part 2 of 2. I bet you were trying to guess what that title would be, huh? Um, and I've gone through um, just literally the instructions, what I thought of them, what I did differently, um, everything else. I go through my twirls, my lining, things I found difficult, things that worked well. So that all is all on those two vlogs so I won't go into full detail about it here but I will still go into some detail so Vivian so over at Vivian coat sorry about this tea that's been spilt there so this particular coat is part of their vintage e-dreaming book or vintage dreaming ebook and it is a vintage traditional coat you have um lapels uh, collar stand notched collar um I don't even know what it's called it's single breasted it's got um Princess seams at the front and the back um, by way of two side panels on either side. It's got a centre back. It's got well pocket, welt pockets with a flap. It's fully lined. You can either have a back belt with two buttons or you can have a complete wraparound belt. And it's got a back vent as well. Um, size wise, um, body measurement. So size wise, it goes from a size 6 to a size 20. Um, bust of 31, waist of 24, all the way to a bust of 45 waist of 38 now i just realized that the um, georgie goes to a size 30 so i'm not sure if this goes to a size 30 although it should do because it's one of their newer patterns and i think all of their newer patterns do go to the larger size although i can't be sure at this moment in time but if you do check out their website there um should tell you that um and i made a size 12 um i made a size 12 everywhere apart from the bus which i graded up to a size 14 i made a 12 and um it was a perfect well it wasn't a perfect fit it was a good fit um, and at the time i'd also made the lining which wasn't a good fit despite me using the same obviously fabric pattern pieces and i was just a bit worried that it wasn't going to fit but i decided to trust the process and it works perfectly it fits perfectly now that it's obviously all together um vivian coat i think the instructions are actually very very good uh, the tailoring techniques in here are good in the sense that I did watch a couple of tailoring videos and um, some craft craft C classes I watched um, on tailoring and um, there were about three or four things that I wanted to incorporate into my coat tailoring wise like adding a sleeve head which is different to so I call the sleeve the sleeve head which is I think what the UK calls it but in America they call the sleeve head a sleeve cap and then the sleeve head they're talking about is a piece of fabric on the inside to create structure around the sleeve head. So they do that. Um, it just shows you how to, you know, um, anchor your shoulder pads. It shows you how to add various bits and pieces for the structure of the coat. Um, double um, line of seaming un in the, under the underarm for extra strength. Again, for pockets. Um, when you do pockets, if you, um, when you stitch 
you know your pocket bags if you go over it twice because the pockets um, do take a lot of pressure from your things being put in them and your hands being put in them and it's always annoying when you have a coat and there's a hole in the in the pocket bags so that's that what else did they have um that i thought was very good um just certain um i think everything was actually quite um quite a good um way of construction you know like sometimes you get a pattern you think why have they decided to do that then why haven't they just done it the normal way or why is this you know and for this pattern everything came together as i thought it should go together so it was quite methodical and quite logical um and i really actually enjoyed working with it because the wool was so lovely to work with it was so lovely to press so lovely to cut and sew so i really really enjoyed it the only thing i didn't enjoy was attaching the lining to the vent and to the hem and um i will show you the instructions for that the instructions literally for attaching the hem attaching the lining to the hem and the vent literally consists of these two boxes here and these two pictures here so now with the vent, um, you have the underlap and the overlap, and then there's sort of like um, a diagonal seam here, and I'll show you in a bit. So that is kind of, it requires more than this and this and this and this to explain how to do that. And I just found it really difficult um, to do um, to the extent that I did end up hand sewing it, which is what it tells you to do. But I was sewing it, I was hand sewing it whilst it was hanging up and it hung perfectly, it was great. But then when I wore it for the photos, there was all sorts of tugs and pulls, which I just didn't understand why that was happening. And I just thought maybe because it's on a body and obviously I have shape in the sense that I've got a, a bum and that's kind of made the fabric move up. Anyway, what I ended up doing, because I couldn't get it to sit straight, is I had to then snip all of my um, stitches that held the lining to the vent just for the coat to hang right and to take photographs. And so it currently is still unstitched because I have contacted Sew Over It and I have asked them for help with regards to attaching this lining and they've asked me to email them. So we'll see how that works. Um, and what else was that I'm going to say? Yeah, so let me show you the coat. This is my coat here. It's made up in a lovely burgundy wool, 100% wool from the Fabric Guys. And I bought this off eBay from the Fabric Guys or Etsy, the Fabric Guys on Etsy. And I have recently gone to their website and I've typed in wool because I really love this wool. Um, is it a boiled wool? I don't know. Is this a boiled wool or is a boiled wool more felty like? So I quite like, I don't know what this wool is called. It's 100% wool. And I know boiled wool is 100% wool as well, but this is kind of like a soft wool um, and it's like, it's not fuzzy or bumpy and it's not Melton either because I've bought Melton before and I had a bad experience actually with Melton. So I made a Cambria duster with the most beautiful Melton wool. It's slightly thinner than this wool, but it was just so soft. It was almost just like, I can say cashmere. I've never bought cashmere, but it was just so soft. It was like moleskin -y type thing. And I made a Cambria duster out of it, but I found that it started to bobble under the arm, under the arm area, even though I hadn't washed it. I'd worn it, of course, but I hadn't washed it. And so that's totally put me off buying Melton ever again, even though it was beautiful to cut. It was just beautiful to look at and to touch and everything else. But if you guys do have any experience yourselves with buying Melton wool, or you know of a place to get some beautiful Melton wool that doesn't bobble, um, I'd be it'd be great to hear. Um, but also, if anybody knows where to get wool that's not boiled wool, just normal 100% wool, I know that sounds a bit weird because I'm really liking this wool. So anyway, I've made it in that from the Fabric Guys and it is lined in a Lady McElroy cotton lawn. I think this is called Coleman Bouquet. Um, and my buttons are these um, kind of traditional antique looking buttons from Hobbycraft. They're quite big. It does say 28 millimeters to 38 millimeter buttons. And I went for those massive ones. And now to be fair, I'm not fully convinced about my button choice, uh, but it is there at the moment. I could easily change them, but I'll wear it and see how it goes. Um, and then at the back, you have the back belt with the buttons again. Um, it's got two piece sleeves, collar, fully lined. Um, and then it's got the back vent. So the back vent, let me stand up. So the back vent is now sitting beautifully because I have unpicked it. And this is the diagonal seam that I'm talking about here. 
and I'll show you on the reverse or on the, on the wrong side. So it is now, I don't know if you can see that it is now loose. I've unpicked that now. So my issue was, um, actually, let me show you. Um, so basically what I'm talking about here um, with regards to this coat is the things that I forgot to mention. My head is cut out, sorry. I forgot to mention in my vlog that was specifically for this coat. So I forgot to wear it. I just thought I should wear it so you can see what it looks like. Um, it goes on really, really nicely and it feels really... The wool is like a nice weight and it feels really heavy and really kind of expensive and it's really warm and I'm really, really liking it. So um, there you go. I think the fit is quite nice. As I say, I did a size 14 at the bust and a 12 everywhere else. So these are the buttons done. It's got a good amount of ease. So this is, as I say, I'm a normally a size 12 in sew over it patterns. So it's got a, got a great amount of ease. And what I like about the sew over it patterns is whether you're making a coat or a dress, their, pat their sizing is um, consistent. So for example, um, when you make a coat, obviously you need a bit more ease, but rather than sizing up to a size 14 because you need ease for clothes underneath your coat, you don't actually have to do that for sew over it. They actually add that ease in it for you. So you still can stick to your original sew over it size, which I have done. So this is the coat here. I think the bust is quite nice enough. Um, what's it called? Ease for me. I'm not sure what these lines are, whether that means it's too small. I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, I think it's fine. Um, so this is the coat tier. These are the pockets. Uh, this is the side seams, beautifully pressed, if I don't say so myself. Um, side, um, you can see my shoulder, my shoulder, my, my sleeves, heads there. And um, what else did I want to show you? Oh, the back. I can't actually show you the back. I stand up here, but it's a bit weird. Back and the vent. And there you go. So that's that. Um, so I am. I haven't actually worn it out yet. So um, I probably wouldn't really wear it fully closed unless it was super, super cold. So I would probably just wear it um, sort of like this so I can show off the lining now and again. Um, and I could also wear it. I don't know why I'm showing you this. I'm sure you all know how to wear a coat. I think it's quite nice to sort of wear it like this as well. Um, but there you go. So this is the coat. Um, so before I go on about the lining, let me just also um, say one thing which I forgot to say in my vlog for this was that um, I it wasn't necessarily a mistake. It just wasn't. If you are going to make this coat or any coat, really pay attention to um, the way you cut and you sew the collar because this obviously wasn't bent it's not it's supposed to be a straight line but for some reason i have actually either cut it um with a slight bend or i've sewn it with a slight bend so that was actually the first thing my husband noticed he said oh is that supposed to be curved like that and to be fair most people wouldn't notice it i think my husband just knows how to notice these things because i make him notice these things but um so that i wish was a lot straighter that one's not so bad that one compared to and the reason why i think obviously pay attention to that is it's right in the front of your coat um so that is a lot more curved than that so just pay attention to cut when you're cutting and you're sewing that or you're pressing that to make sure it's all straight um and yeah let's go back to the um the vent so let me show you the vent so this was how am i going to do this have i got a hanger Oh, the hanger's gone here. Right. Um, I could actually put it over here and bring this over here. So the vent. I had originally sewn it, as I said, um, hanging, and it, it actually sewed not bad, not badly at all. So this is the vent here. So this was all sewn down, and this is the underlap if you're looking at it from the back this is the underlap and this is the overlap so the underlap i've then hand stitched that down and that's actually quite a nice finish um and then this bit is supposed to be sewn down now the issue is with the overlap and um, if i can put that so the overlap is this part here so you have a bigger 
I guess, hem here. Um, but then the fabric is the same um, sort of width as this fabric here, if that makes sense, of the vent. But obviously the hem here is only small, whilst the hem here is quite wide. So it doesn't actually tell you like how much to press it in to then, you know, hand stitch that to, to this hem. Um, and it doesn't actually tell you at what point to hand stitch this. Um, and it doesn't actually tell you quite a lot of things actually with regards to the vent lining insertion or attachment. So that was quite disappointing. So what I've decided to do, uh, my original stitch line, hand stitch line was here and that was causing all sorts of pulls and tugs. And now I have um, undone it obviously and I've just secured a little stitch there and that seems to have done the trick. It now hangs quite well. So that was actually a difference of about a centimeter and a bit going up so that was what was causing the pulls and the tugs now I'm, I'm happy I can easily hand stitch that my issue is this bit here so you can see there's like an over you know there's an extra bit of fabric there so what happens there I'm not sure um you know it, I don't actually know what to do to that bit there um, and all the way here do I just tuck that bit under because there's quite a lot of extra fabric here I don't know if you can see there's quite a lot of extra fabric here do i just literally just tuck that under and, and and hand stitch that down there i guess that's the best way to do it but that still doesn't sort of explain how i would sort out this kind of fabric there which is just a bit annoying um so yes i've contacted so over and hopefully they'll get back to me the only issue is talking about this um via email probably wouldn't work at all it was only if I could maybe video call them which I don't think they have the time for individual customers video calling them asking for um, help on their pattern so I'm not sure what I'm going to do um I will do a quick email and see what they say and then I'm just going to try and hand stitch it the best way I can and the priority is obviously making it look flat and hang nicely from the outside and not necessarily making it look that nice on the inside so for those of you that have actually sewn a coat with a vent with a lining and um, if you could you know maybe recommend um, a pattern that has good instructions for that um, or a tutorial there are actually quite a lot of tutorials for vents but the problem is because obviously the lining pattern and the fab the pattern pieces are different for every pattern and so the instructions would obviously be different for every pattern and as i say i did look at some crafty classes when before i made the coat and there was an excellent class on linings and facings and again the lady did a beautiful kind of tutorial on how to attach the lining and it looks so simple attach it to the vent it looks so simple but her particular um what's the word her particular i'm gonna say routine it's not routine her particular way of doing things um involved the side seams not being sewn together so it involved the side seams not being sewn together for you to access underneath and be able to do the sewing and manipulating the, the fabrics together obviously my side seams were already together so it was quite difficult for me to then follow that um to that tutorial um and then the other thing as well is i have made the heather blazer by closet core not closet core um, Friday Pattern Company and now that's a blazer obviously it doesn't have a vent but they um, do a fully bagged lining where everything is machine stitched even the hem and then obviously um, right sides together machine hemmed all the way around machine stitched all the way around and the hem is machine stitched and then the gap is in the center back seam of the lining it comes out through there and then you just sew the lining by hand using a ladder stitch and I thought that was beautiful it was almost magical how it came together like I couldn't understand how the hem was done perfectly without the thread showing through to the other side of the fabric um, I'm not sure how they did that but um, I thought that was a clever way of doing it now I think you could also do something like that with a coat with a vent um, so sew everything right sides together and then turn it out turn it inside out using the center back seam in a, in the lining um but anyway i am still on the hunt so i've really enjoyed actually making this coat and i really love the finished product bar the the lighting issue but i am on the lookout now for another coat to make um i quite like the idea of the liesel and co have um 
done a sneak peek of a new pattern they've got it looks like a trench coat pattern with a back vent and a, and a is it called a cape a rain cape a wind cape that th the thing that goes at the back of the coat a wind wind shelter i'm not sure what it's called but i'm sure you know you know what trench coats have they have like the wind flap or rain flap or something and um, but they've made it in a wool rather than trench coat material so i'm really excited to see what what that pattern is that's coming out in the next couple of days there's also the isla trench coat which i'd like to make um or or i'm looking at making and there's also the and because they both have vents as well so i could try and hopefully tackle that nemesis of mine sort of the lining vent issue and um, but also i'd like to tackle the jessica blazer now which is by closet core which i've had the pattern and the fabric and all the notions all ready for me to do for ages and ages now but I was quite intimidated by it because apparently there are a lot of tailoring skills in the Jessica blazer uh, but now having tackled the tailoring things bits in this coat I'm really actually looking forward to it I quite enjoyed the hand stitching I quite enjoyed all the tailoring processes and the Jessica blazer is obviously shorter it's a blazer and it might have a back vent actually and um, so I'll probably have to you know I'll probably have another go of um of trying to tackle my vent issue the only other thing i want to talk about as well was my other makes which i almost forgot was i made a sleeve roll and a tailor's ham and um, this pattern um was on a website called i think it's aliwa e-l-e-w-a lovely free pattern very easy to make this is just stuffed with sawdust saw shavings not sawdust saw shavings which i bought from pets at home it was like 1.99 for a small bale and i still have some left over after stuffing these two and um, literally the pattern pieces are as you can see it one two um so right sides together leave a gap turn it inside turn it the right way out um, and fill it with saw shavings and then use a ladder stitch to to stitch it up and this as well so I actually didn't need the sleeve roll I didn't think because I was going to buy a sleeve board which is a pressing board an ironing board for a sleeve sleeve and I'm actually glad that I made this because a sleeve board you can get them for about 20 pounds but if you wanted like a really good one because there's some of the reviews were like oh it breaks after like three uses blah 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 so some of the really good reviews were for wooden ones now this isn't a sleeve board but I'm just saying like if it's made out of solid wood you know it's going to last forever and they were like 100 pounds or, or even more than that I just thought I'm not going to pay that for a sleeve ironing thing um and so i didn't and so i made that and that came in really handy i used this for the sleeves of, of course um and also um i'll pop up a photo actually of the sleeve um the sleeve at uh, once i've added the gathering sleeves um it tells you to um add a lot of steam to the sleeve to allow the um fabric to shrink a little bit and to allow the ease to come together so it has the perfect sort of shape to fit into the arm side nicely and i use that to kind of shape the sleeve around it as i showed you in that photo um again for the bus starts the, the bus starts the princess seams i use this um and so that's very useful and very easy to make so this was a um, fabric that i had lying around in my stash it's actually remnants of a ted baker dead stock fabric that i bought from rainbow fabrics kilburn and then the other piece of equipment that I used was my clapper, which is really good, actually. So for those of you that don't know, when you press a seam, especially with wool, you press the seam with your iron, lots and lots of steam. You take off the iron, you put this on there and you allow this to stay on the seam until the seam is cool. So that basically sets the steam to make it nice and flat. Also, this bit, which I'd never used before, is actually very good for ironing um, seams. Um, so you don't get um, you don't get iron marks on the other part of the of the piece that you're sewing. You literally just put you just um, line up the seam here and you iron on there. So it's very very good. This is what I've used. Um, so that is what I forgot to mention in my vlog for the Vivian coat. And I think that is all I have to say. Oh, photos of myself wearing the coat. Sorry, photos of myself wearing the coat um and that's it so hopefully you enjoy that it's a fairly short compared to my normal roundups of the month it's 38 minutes i think i can see i'm hoping to get a march plans out um and also 
a Friday sews with like fabric that I've bought recently or maybe I might combine that into two I'm not sure but yes please do comment below especially if you have any tried and tested patterns for coats and easy instructions for attaching linings to vents and hems that would be really really great I do try to read all of your comments and I do try to reply to all of them I do really like um, that interaction again I'm on Instagram my social thread you know please comment on there or message me on there if you want to reach out have a chat or talk sewing <laughs> um, in the meantime thank you so much for everybody's um, time I know it takes time to watch these vlogs thank you very much for your support um, I can hear the baby crying in the background um, but yes um, thank you goodbye good night god bless see you next time take care bye bye